Hello, my name is Mel Balsamo. I am a software test engineer in Cadabra Software. Today, I will be talking about Cadabra's Active Directory web service and demonstrating how to incorporate it into a simple InfoPath form. Cadabra's Active Directory web service is used to obtain users' authenticated information and it integrates with InfoPath forms without the need of writing code. It can also be used in browser-enabled forms and others that do not require InfoPath. All the Active Directory methods are accessible in your AD User Info URL. It currently supports the following methods. Find users by alias. This method attempts to find any user with an alias matching the specified search string. Find users by name does the same thing except that it searches by the user's name. Get employees for manager is useful if you wish to return a list of employees who have a manager with a specified alias, and that can be retrieved through the getManagerAlias method. GetMyInfo is useful for obtaining the currently logged in user's authenticated information. GetUserInfo, on the other hand, obtains other users' information based on their alias. And then we have the isUserMemberOfGroup method, which returns true or false if a user is part of the specified group or not. In this sample InfoPath form, I pre-added a couple of groups and fields that would auto-populate using Cadabra's Active Directory web service. Let's go ahead and add data connections to our form. Go to Tools, Data Connections, click Add. We want to receive data from a web service. And here we will enter the AD user info URL, which is the same as what we have here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it on here. Click Next. And all our Active Directory methods are listed here. We will create data connections to all of these methods so we can use them in our form. So first, let's select Get My Info and click Next. Leave this box unchecked as we don't want to store data in our form. Click Next. Now we'd want this method to automatically retrieve data when we open the form so we can leave this box checked. Then click Finish. Let's add another for the Get User Info method. Receive data web service. So just repeat the same process and in the list of operations select get user info. We can leave the username parameter blank for now as we will specify that later in the fly. Click next. This time we don't want the form to automatically retrieve this data when it opens so uncheck that and click finish. Let's do the same for all the other remaining methods. Our data connections are all set. Let's start designing our form. Close the data connections wizard. Now these fields will contain my Active Directory username and email address using the getMyInfo method. Double click on the My Username field to display its properties. We will specify a default value from our secondary data source, get my info, expand data fields to get the value node. We will filter value so that it only displays data when key is equal to display name. Click OK until all the dialogs are closed. We will do the same for the email address field. But this time, we will filter value such that key is equal to mail. Let's preview our form. Now you'll see that those fields are auto-populated with my Active Directory information. 
Next, we also want to retrieve a list of employees who have a manager with a specified alias. This can be done through the Get Employees for Manager method. If we pull down our secondary data source for this method, we will see that it requires manager alias to query data fields. But how can we obtain the manager's alias? That's where the get manager alias method is used. Since I have the same manager as the other employees, I'll use my username to retrieve our manager's alias. Let's add a button that we'll use for our queries. Double click on the button to display its properties. We're going to label it as Get Employee Info, and then add a rule to it. The first action would be to set the value of the username field from the Get Manager alias secondary data source to a value that we previously retrieved through the Get My Info method, but this time we'll filter value such that key is equal to my alias, which in our organization is referred to as SAM account name. Let's click OK. Next, we want to query using the Get Manager Alias data connection. And then we want to set the value of the Get Employees for Manager, Manager Alias field, to the actual Get Manager Alias result. And lastly, we will query using the Get Employees for Manager data connection. Our button rules are set. Let's close all these. To show the resulting list of employees, let's drag this node as a repeating table onto our form. Let's try it in preview mode. Clicking this button pulls out a list of employees for the query manager alias. The value column shows the employee's aliases, while the display column shows their respective names. What I really want is to auto-populate the employee name and employee email fields. And since we already have the data for the employee names, it's a lot easier now. Let's go back to our form. We can delete this repeating table now so it doesn't show in our form. Change the employee name text box to a drop down list box and double click to see its properties. This drop down will look up values from an external data source, which is Get Employees for Manager. For the entries, select the entry repeating table. For the value, we have the value node since it represents the employee alias. And for the display name, Let's select Display. Now, in order to auto-populate the employee email field, we will use the GetUserInfo method. Let's add a rule to this dropdown. First, we will set the value of the GetUserInfo username field to the selected value in the employee name field since it represents the employee's alias. And then, we want to actually query using the Get User Info Data Connection. And lastly, set the value of the employee email field as Get User Info's value filtered with key equal to mail. Our rules are all set. Click OK until we close all the dialogs. Then let's preview our form once again. 
as the form loads, you'll see that there's currently no list in the employee name dropdown. But then after clicking this button, it will populate with a list of employees. And if we select one, the employee email is retrieved as well.